the military or spokesman says uh, they can't find it. You know, the one in, I'm, I'm referring to the Yukon, you know. They say, you know, we're not going to claim it was a, a party balloon or a hobby balloon until we find it. Well, they're never going to find it. It is made, uh, the, the material is so thin, we have to be very careful handling it or it'll you get a hole in it. It's uh, one mil thick, that's one thousandth of an inch thick. The little tractor that we built, and the one flying was a little bit larger, but the tractor we built, again, is postage stamp size. Now, when that rocket exploded up there, uh, it probably vaporized that little balloon. I mean, there's no pieces that balloon's gonna be found. And probably, even if the tractor didn't break apart, you're never gonna find a little one inch square thing down on the ground somewhere, uh, out in the middle of the water or the snow. And so how do we, why do we think that it's there? Well, I'm 98% sure it was this ham radio balloon. And, you know, maybe 2%, it could have been an alien. You know, I don't know, but I think it was, a, I think it was a ham balloon. And the reason, reason was where we were tracking it. And the last track we got, it was on the west coast of Alaska. And it got dark. You see, our, our pico balloons don't transmit during the dark because they're solar power only. But, but they continue on. They continue on. And when the sun comes up the next day, you know, it starts plotting again. So we can see, you know, where it is. Uh, and the NOAA prediction uh, for that flight put it across Alaska and right exactly in the Yukon, right here between the two little cities where the military says they shot down unidentified objects. And we never heard from it again. So, you know, now it's not unusual for a balloon to just go down by itself or for some reason stop talking, but it's very, very much of a coincidence that, uh, it was right in the same area when a missile went off and we hadn't heard from it anymore.